Uh, before we get into the video proper, I just want to give a quick shout out to Yuri Clark, whose video made me want to revisit the game in the first place. So check out their video; it's really good. I love their theory. Anyway, back to the let's let's start talking. Okay, let's start talking. Like right now. Little Miss Fortune is a pretty awesome game with a fascinatingly beautiful art style, but what I think is most revelatory about this property is how it recontextualizes the events of its predecessor, Fran Bow. Throughout Fran Bow, there was this constant question on my mind, are the things Fran's seeing real? And with Little Miss Fortune, it's clear that they are. The voice in Little Miss Fortune is tangible within the world, as is her fox guardian Benjamin. Considering that Fran Bo is almost nine years old now, which is wild because I remember watching Jacksepticeye play this episode by episode, I feel like going through the game knowing all that we do know will finally help little me understand what the heck was happening, and how the game, despite its eccentricities, conveys the importance of hopefulness in the darkest of situations. Part 1. Reality or Not as mentioned before, Little Misfortune basically confirms that what we saw on Fran Bow was indeed reality. For example, Little Misfortune shows how the voice can act as a tangible force within Misfortune's reality. And also, when Little Misfortune is walking, she sees images Fran has seen, beings that Fran has seen. Why would she see them as well if they weren't real? Especially Itward, which was distinctly Fran's friend. But here's the thing. Fran Bo really isn't vague at all if you take everything Fran is experiencing at face value. The step to understanding Fran Bo for me was to understand that everything Fran sees is real. That includes the giant shadow goat, the dancing trees, and the talking cat. Now I don't really blame Kid Me for thinking the opposite since they don't really make it clear in the beginning. The asylum is a strikingly real place imitating the actual horrible conditions asylums had at the time. Everything is normal until Fran takes the pills, and every time she takes the pills she's experiencing these horrible visions. It seems the most plausible to attribute this to some fucked up drug fueled delusion this poor child is experiencing as a result of her trauma. And the game wants you to think this, but there's some things it sprinkles here and there to inform you that what you see is actually real even during this first section. For example, the children's Kamalas all say things that match with their file, and as we learn later, Kamalas are attracted and feed off fear. They all repeat things that children fear within their reality. Additionally, Reading Fran's profile reveals that every single medicine she's had makes her see things. It's just the strongest with duotine. She saw her more before she took any medicine or even before she went to the asylum as established in the prologue. Later in the game, it becomes clearer that this is true when you find Leon's journal and travel to other realms where everybody knows who Fran is. Later, the parts of the game directly address the idea that Fran is crazy by stating that she isn't, not to mention the fact that Fran knew about facts she couldn't have known about without being gifted. See, Fran is actually a very special little cranberry, akin to Little Misfortune who can hear the voice because she has supernatural abilities. That's why everyone knows Fran's name and understands who she is almost immediately, and in Thursday she even gets confused as to why everyone knows her name. Speaking of, Leon's journal really helps to outline all of the dimensions within the game and the next one, including Itward's talk when he surprises Fran with a birthday cake. Little Misfortune actually goes to one of them at the end when she's walking, that being Senner's D. Sorry if I mispronounced that which is death. The whole game might actually be her intersecting with this world and trying to reach that place. So Fran Bo is not an allegorical representation of a traumatized little girl experiencing hopelessness until finally receiving peace at death, but a fantastical story about a girl traveling through different realities than what is the game trying to say? Part 2. What the game is trying to say. Wow, I didn't, I didn't think of anything creative for this part name. Very simply, the game explores how grief or suffering can only be survived if one lets them experience it to the full degree and then move past it. For this to be communicated effectively, it's imperative that the events Fran experiences are real because it's a message of empowerment rather than disempowerment, which I'll get to later. Take Leon's journal. 
Leon begins as a tortured, isolated man before he realizes he has the same sort of affinity for dimension perception as Fran Bo. He learns of the Kamalas, the Balakas, and other beings. His son thinks he's insane and this drives him into despair. Eventually, Madame Magbuka of the Last Reality incites such a great amount of suffering that Leon learns he wants to live. Leon is then able to find inner peace renewed with a sense of happiness, enough for him to become Lucifern, one of those long-haired tree things that Fran talks to after she escapes the asylum and throughout the game. Upon experiencing the greatest amount of suffering he could ever live through, Leon transformed into a being of pure light and discovery, unbounded and free, for he realized that suffering was a part of him. Kamalas can only be turned into Vlakas after experiencing suffering. As the Lucifern said themselves, you are your own home. Invite yourself in, and you'll find many doors will open. Um, another thing I want to mention, quick disclaimer, Oswald does this huge speech about how, like, suffering brings anguish, Fran, and that's why I killed your parents. Um, I'm not saying the same thing here. I want to make a clear distinction. I feel like Fran is more a message about determination and resilience rather than doing behavior as a result of your trauma and then justify it using your trauma's justification for your behavior. Trust me, I watched Bojack, you all know this, I do not support that. So yeah, wanna make a clear differentiation. I'm talking, when I'm talking about tragedy and grief, building you a better, it's more like you have the strength to get through this, not that, not whatever Oswald is spouting. I think that's complete bull. Anyway, the same can be said for grief. Fran's journey back to her home and eventually to confront the very people who took her parents away is all an essential plan to deal with her grief. Grief can often make one feel powerless. Someone experiencing grief can display qualities which may be labeled as lunacy. But in the end, it is the strength to choose happiness over suffering and pain that marks a valuable change within an individual. Fran's story is one of hope because by experiencing the darkest depths and still remaining ever curious, Fran is able to make this very choice. I think it's also so important that this was told from the perspective of a child. In society, children are often viewed as the most powerless and the most naive. Their quote-unquote undeveloped brains preventing them from deliberating right from wrong as complex as adults do. And to some extent that is true, but it also, I feel, demeans children's intelligence. Kinda like any Illumination production. However, Kill Monday's games repeatedly empower children and teach us adults about the boundless creativity, compassion, and hope a child can harbor without even knowing about it. In Little Misfortune, this is a sparkling light amidst a darker fate the player knows and comes to know to be true. In Fran Bo, it is the journey to preserve and enhance those qualities enough to believe that one can conquer grief. A journey that can only be completed by a child able to experience a different reality than ourselves. That is why Remor, the demon she must defeat, closely resembles remorse, because Fran's journey is ultimately one of triumphing against this very feeling. Remorse over her parents' passing, remorse that she couldn't do more. This journey wouldn't be as significant as it is if it was all just a drug-induced dream. Fran is special in terms of her powers, but also because of her innovation and curiosity. I think it's a nice message to impart that grief should never stop someone from discovering and being curious, since she found her parents partially because of her curiosity. Side note, Mr. Midnight must be a cat to reference the phrase, curiosity killed a cat. It would make sense, even more when considering the idea that he quote-unquote dies at the end, or is revealed to be dead. And the only way the cat life is preserved is because of her curious nature and ability to act as a medium between the realities. I mean, of course, in the prologue, we never see Fran directly talking to Mr. Midnight, so the fact that he's dead makes a lot of sense when you revisit the story because it's clear that Fran's ability to see in between realities has somehow brought Mr. Midnight back or that he's a cat gate. I don't know what that tree king was saying in a Thursday, but you know. Another thing of note, the asylum kids can actually see Kamala's too, probably because they're being being experimented on or being fed to a teen. I, I don't really know where to put this part in the video, but it's just something I noticed. Getting back to the main topic, it's also important to address that the grief explored here is both the grief over her parents and the grief over lost security and foundation. That's why the prologue is about her parents and her aunt, and then seeing Ramor for the first time, it's the loss of her foundation. 
I really admired this aspect of their games, especially considering that it's not really aimed at children. Definitely not. But at adults, rewatching Fran Bo made me realize that all the childlike qualities I had dismissed as inappropriate to my age, curiosity, boundless optimism, innovation, are actually the best tools to handle complex adult emotions. And it is the nurturing of these qualities that are one's strengths, not the denial of them. This message would be really confused if it's just a side effect of the drug she's taking, because then it would disempower Fran rather than empower her. Meaning, instead of it promoting Promoting the preservation of childlike qualities, it denounces her suffering as pure fantasy to cope with her horrible reality, when it should be about legitimizing her fears and beliefs and legitimizing her solution to deal with her grief. Within this world, Fran's life actually being in danger by shadow beasts is far more validating of her struggle than a suggestion that she's just imagining it. Nevertheless, there's something eternally beautiful about a game that lets you know that despite everything, it's still you. I will put Undertale references in all of my videos and you cannot stop me. And that you can get through this. And that pain that you're feeling and the way it makes you act and perceive the world doesn't make you quote unquote crazy. You can stay there as long as you want, but when you feel you cannot get out, look within yourself for the innate qualities you possess that embolden your self-concept and can help to build a new foundation. As it would said, through time you have to explore and experience to understand. The answers will come to you when you find them, not when others tell you how or where. Once that foundation is built, you'll be able to move on to a more beautiful land where you can continue to be curious and exist within the world. Then, between guilt and fear, you'll be able to choose happiness. Conclusion Hope you guys enjoyed this shorter video. Another Bojack video is in the works as well, as, and a video about the Telltales, The Walking Dead. Just wanted to get this out because I've been rewatching this game and it's on my master list of things I've always wanted to talk about. I don't know how much of what I'm saying has been repeated by the others, but I hope I was able to provide something new that you hadn't thought of before. It's so weird how a game that starts in an insane asylum manages to convey such a great sense of hope. But it's com also completely on brand, considering that game is Fran Bow. Maybe I'll revisit the game to provide a more comprehensive view of the plot while deconstructing Little Most Fortune simultaneously, but that'll have to wait. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video, and I really appreciate all the support on my last one. Sorry it took me so long to make another one. Um, but yeah.